Hello, um, my name is Inno Kim. I'm an application engineer at MathWorks. Today we will talking about um, modeling drilling systems with Simulink by going through multiple demos that I built uh, under the uh, Simulink and the Simscape environment. Um, before I joined MathWorks, I worked in Halliburton three years. Half was in the uh, corporate innovation team and then half was just very drilling. Most of my job spending over there was building the uh, physics based model for um, control systems de design. So the demos that I will show you, these are all what I actually spent time on for three years. And there were very difficult times to build a lot of uh, custom codes, but I realized that when I moved to MathWorks, I found many uh, useful um, tools that I, I could use to save hundreds of, of hours and a lot of monies over there. So I want to share my experience with you in this talk. So as you can see, um, the tool um, we're using is the foundation is MATLAB and then Simulink. And Simscape is under this foundation, and there are multiple uh, toolboxes. And today we'll probably more focusing on the multi multi body, but I will give you some resources at the end of the, this talk. Okay. So this is agenda for today. We'll start with a drilling example. Then we'll talk about physics-based modeling in MathWorks tool chains. Why we are modeling this, and then how we can use those models. Then I will do a little bit of demo about how to import the existing CAD models into Simulink. Then we'll talk about some interesting uh, blocks that we can use in a Simscape multibody. And using those blocks, I made another demo, the bottom hole assembly vibration example. Then uh, we'll talk about how to update the physics-based model to the uh, digital twin, which representing the real, the, your real systems for better use. Then we'll wrap up with this talk with uh, some resources um, you can reach. Okay, so let's move to MATLAB. So I'm using a uh, project. You may don't know what is this. Um, this is um, this is called um, a MATLAB project. It can be called a Simulink project. It contains all those files that you need for doing a certain projects. So you can see there are different types of file, like step file. These are the the designs and M files. And getting information of those. Um, um, models and then the SLX file, this is Simulink file. Right? So basically when I just open up the uh, the project, it will run these parameters that it requires to run this simulation. You can see in the workspace, there are uh, parameters are already loaded. So I just click this, open up the model. And This side, this side, you can see the model and then some um, dials and the indicators. And let's just start and then see what what we can see. Now, right now, I'm running in 150 seconds of simulation just by clicking Run button. It will open up the Mechanics Explorer to show the animations. So what you are seeing over here in the top left, this is the uh, bottom model assembly and the the drill bit side, and then this is the top drive side. And this is the bottom view of the um, um, BHA, and then this is top view of the top drive. So you can see there's something happening. Uh, this bit side is rotating and then stop, and rotating and stop, and then top drive is consistently rotated in the same RPM. This calls uh, in the drilling industry and the stick slip behavior. 
although these pipes are like seven inches OD, so steel pipes, but when the length of this entire system is longer and longer, you can imagine this is kind of like a wire. So whenever the force or torque, demanding torque is increasing in the in the uh, very far away from the, the the power source, then you can see the twisting effect of entire uh, structure when it in increase the el uh, elastic um, energy and then release it. And then that's why you can see over here in this uh, measurement, the top drive speed is constant, but the just zoom in. Bit RPM is actually stop, and then it actually three times then um, top drive speed, and then come down and stop. This is the uh, one of the serious um, dynamics where drilling industry wants to solve. Okay, so let's go through a little bit about this model. And you can see there are subsystems and then the uh, special blocks. Um, you can see these black lines are Simulink, and then this grayish line is uh, Simscape multibody domain. Let me just go into the top drive. There are two uh, subsystems I just uh, com commented out. Right now, I'm using simplified version of uh, top drive so that we're just accepting the RPM. There's a the rate limiter, and then we integrate it to give the motion into the uh, this level joint to rotate the drive side. Or you can actually do um, more sophisticated model with the, the AC drive. You can see different colors of lines. This is electrical, Simscape electrical, and then this green line is uh, um, Simscape mechanical. And there's a couple between those two domains with this um, PMSM drive. This is more a uh, sophisticated way of designing this, and you can imagine that um, um, any, any subsystem can be expanded with different uh, domains. And over here, I'm showing you, um, this is all uh, simulink-based calculations that are presenting the stick slip behavior and there are regions to uh, we need to consider during the dynamics there are uh, um, static and then there's transition and then a kinetic so you can see this is switch is uh, changing the um the situation and then also there are signs over there so basically what this calculation is doing is finding out the uh, friction based on the situation and then it multiplies the the normal force so weight and bit over here is the normal force uh, acting on the uh, bit side and also i'm adding over here some formation uh, uh, information using this signal long editor which is actually the next version of signal uh, builder with using this um, tool, you can simply uh, make some signals by just adding um, points and then you can run, uh, you can make different, multiple different scenarios. Okay. So I'm just adding up the, the control value, where bit control value and some scenarios and then multiply that normal force to the friction that goes into the uh, torque demand. That's, that's where the stick slip happening. So you can imagine there's too much normal force then stick slip happening and then entire uh, system will be fluctuating like this. Let me rerun this simulation and then see what we can do with this uh, controller. So it's a real time, you can actually change this um, simulation. So when stick slip start in the field, um, drillers just do like 10% increase speed and then see whether they, um, they can get out of the stick slip. That doesn't work. Then they do 10% more and still doesn't work. Then they decrease the weight on bit to get out of this uh, region. So as you can see, this is very, um, 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 
unscientific way of getting out of this kind of dynamics. By using the simulator, we can actually try to learn what's the behavior and then get some better strategy. And then once we confirm this model is actually reflecting the real, sys real uh, system, we can build the uh, controller using this plan model. That's the whole idea. Okay. Let's go back to um, slides and talk talk about a little bit about like physics based modeling. So uh, MathWorks tool chains, um, you can build a lot of um, you can build a physics based model with different ways. So um, um, symbolic equation way and, and the script or function based using the uh, uh, partial differential equation toolboxes. This is where I used to spend my time on. And there are different ways. It's a simulink. You can you already saw that um, stick state behavior can be calculated with the simulink blocks. Or you can just drop it in a sim, uh, simscape blocks, which actually um, representing the um, the uh, the real systems. It's, you don't have to build from scratch about like partial differential equation or any logic. OK, so where we can use these uh, models? First, we can do um, once we make this physics based modeling, we can confirm the or verification or validation of each component and then connect them together and then see whether we can um, run this system in the design phase. Right? Or Using this plan model, we can do the um, control system design using traditional um, control systems design toolboxes or reinforcement learning. Where we these days a lot of hype goes in over there. Reinforcement learning requires robust uh, plan model, which is which can be built in the uh, Simulink and the like, um, Simscape. Or we can do the brick team maintenance. Um, exploring uh, some um, other domains where we can um, uh, change some components to see what kind of data we can get out of and then do the classification of damage or further we can use this model to uh, estimate the uh, remaining useful life using the LUL calculations. Okay. So a lot of our cases, we have um, some systems or designed already, or the systems that we are trying to integrate with the, our new systems, they are already existing, is produced by different vendors. And for example, if you think about a rig system, not only a single company can build entire system. There are multiple vendors and multiple um, companies or collaborate together and then make this entire system. So if you want to test it out your own system, you cannot really um, rely on only the um, field data set. Right? You want to know about how the physics goes uh, working on your will affect on your system. So in that case, um, you can bring some CAD model and then bring that those into the Simulink environment. So let me show you some example. So this is SOLIDWORKS model. Um, I don't have um, drilling industry specific ones that I could build, but um, I just bring this four cylinder model. So you can see there's some degree of freedom. Um, there are components or parts, and then those are defined as um, called mates. And you can see this lower block was fixed uh, with this F indicate that this is fixed for a global uh, coordinate system. And then everything else are on top of that, just have some relationship between those two parts. So we offer um, some plugins, three uh, softwares you can um, use. So this is MATLAB documentation. You can see over here, we 
have the plugins for the Autodesk Inventor, Clairo, uh, Parametric, Parametric, and then SolidWorks. So we have the uh, link for that um, plugins. Once you um, install these plugins, you can find out the um, Simscape multi-body link on the, the tool, in, especially in the SolidWorks. So once we just export that, I already did it. Just let me just do it again. What it will do is it will go through each individual part and then build a step on a step file. And then also it will generate the XML file, which contains all those information between parts. And that XML file is where what we will use in the sim, uh, MATLAB and bring the model into the Simulink environment. So let's wait a, a little bit and then be done soon. Then we can go over here. Okay, there are a couple of uh, constraints it's not support. This is this um, the difference between the uh, definition of mates and the simulink. So a couple of like uh, offset um, design, those are not really um, think as a, some joint element in the simulink. So it's it, those can be uh, automatically ignored. So the function that we will use is SM import. And we have this XML file over here. Let's run it. We'll bring all those uh, subsystems, uh, the parts, and then automatically connect them together. So basically, um, this is the equivalent um, system with the SOLIDWORKS model. So if I just run hit button right now, I don't have any actuator or whatever, but um, just change the viewpoint and then here. So Simulink environment is not for like this kind of detailed designs, but we are doing the simulation in the uh, and make the uh, simulation environment. The reason why um, this crankshaft is moving like this is because we already set it up this entire environment with the gravity. So if we look into this uh, mechanism configuration, you can see the gravity is y direction negative. So in over here, um, the coordinate system, the y positive is up and then the gravity is acting downward. That's why um, this crankshaft is moving um, due to the gravity. Let's um, add a very simple um, actuator in this cylinder. This is cylindrical three, which you can find out that is cl by clicking over here, this cylinder, okay? And then we want to see whether if we uh, add some force in the simulink, what's happening over here. So this actu actuation, we put provide input, and then we just try to make the um, motion as automatically calculated. Then it will open up some uh, port. This is a physical physical signal port. So when we try to put some signal in, we need to have some conversion between simulink and then uh, physical signal. This and then because um, this is a cylinder uh, force, so let's define as a sine wave. Okay, and then the amplitude one is too small, maybe 10. And then let's make a, some realistic value for here. If we run the system, now it's it's moving, but it's not quite a correct force of the frequency. So you get some idea over here already that um, design of experiment 
can be happening by just changing these two parameters. So we can find out what what kind of values for the force and um, the frequency requires to run this simulation correctly. Right? Okay, this is a pretty cool tool so that you don't have to build entire system from the scratch. You can imagine that like how many uh, cylindrical joints over here or the prismatic joints. It, if you want to build everything, it will take a lot of time. But as you can see, all those step files are um, imported from the um, from the uh, the file of generating the SOLIDWORKS. So you can just use it directly. Okay. Close this. Scroll to slides. So um, there are a couple of interesting uh, Simscape multi uh, multi-body blocks which I want to introduce one was the uh the flexible beam element and another one is the uh special uh, contact force so as you um maybe you remember that the stick slip um the drill string example i use this general uh, flexible beam let me just go back So I use uh, the block over here. Um, we used to, uh, when we try to build this kind of flexible uh, dynamics, we had to use um, rigid body, small element, and then do the lump mass um, modeling. But over here, this single block is actually helping us to build the entire system. Right now, what you are seeing over here is 914 meters, which is equivalent with the 3000 feet. You can just build one single block to uh, representing this long uh, system. The stiffness and the inertia you can just define over here. As you can see, density and the Young's modulus is representing a steel structure, right? And then you can just update it. You can get all those calculate value for rigidity or the, the moment of inertia automatically. If you want to see better uh, um, estimation of this um, bending or torsional element, you can actually increase the number of elements. Right now I have 10, okay? Obviously, if you increase these elements, um, then the simulation time will be a little bit slower because we need to calculate more calculations. But nonetheless, it's really um, easier then if you can imagine that you build the entire system with the lumps um, mass model and huge size of, of um, sparse matrix for stiffness and damping and mass. Right? Another one that I want to show you is, let me just use a new block over here. It's, this is really interesting block. It's So um, the penetration is kind of issue for building this kind of uh, dynamics. As you can see, this block actually can, um, we can just define the normal force for this uh, stiffness and then damping. This is the, um, this block is actually using the for, um, this simple uh, force equation so that when the uh, penetration happening they proportionally increase the stiffness and then make the uh, repel uh, force to get out of those kind of uh, collusion reasons. And also there is a friction force you can define between those two elements. So you can, the one that I uh, show you in the drill string example, the um, sticky friction can be actually changed with this single block. So. <clears throat> but this one is actually opening up a huge opportunity for us to study about what's happening in the downhole. 
usually we don't know what's happening and because of our telemetry system is very very uh, low uh, frequency so it, it is just like imagination what's happening yeah. but if we can build any model to representing those kind of uh, physics right we can see what's happening over here this is another model that um i'm I can um, simulate the BHA vibration. So you can see there are multiple subsystems, this representing each individual strings. So you have, we have a BHA, and then there are like uh, uh, five more pipes over there. And inside over there, we have a contact force um, blocks between the, uh, the, the pipe versus the, uh, the drill, um, the oil well, and just let me just run it, and it's much easier to. Uh, okay, I didn't call up the parameters to explain what this model do. Okay, yeah, again, it opens up the Mechanics Explorer, and just showing that. Um, so this drill pipe is how I design it is the BHA part is a little bit thicker and then the pipes are pipe side is uh, thinner and because the drill uh, drilling well is always the same following the uh, the OD of the drill bit so BHA usually has narrow gap and then the pipe has a larger gap. And when the stick slip uh, happening, now you can see there is very irregular uh, vibration happening. So when do we don't have any stick slip, this kind of um, um, vibration will never happen. But because of stick slip, we, we have this um, detoured um, it, this vibration can detourate actually the entire uh, multi-million dollars of um, bottom hole assembly components. Not this. I didn't uh, just stop over here. Actually, I added the um, some component within the BHA. So the the rectangular or, or cubic element is actually representing the IMU, the initial measurement unit in the um, BHA. So I placed two, pl two uh, IMUs in it, one near the uh, thicker pipe and then another one is a thinner pipe. And then we can measure um, the dynamics by using this um, three axis initial measurement unit block in the aerospace block set what we can use. So we can just bring those information in that actually results this signal. So what you're seeing over here, left hand side is just rotation. And then the middle one is the acceleration. And then this, the right one is the um, angular velocity. So Basically, what this means is you can actually regenerate what your uh, what the sensors in the downhole can see. So, using this information, we will learn about like what's happening really in the downhole, and if we um, understand the dynamics of downhole uh, systems, we can build the control system to get out of this kind of um, uh, vibration situations. Okay. And then finally, we have um, um, parameter estimation. So, usually, when we try to build the physics based model, we just use the parameters with some uh, spec sheet data. And this doesn't really reflect in the, your system. Um, let me just open up another example over here because um, we don't have any of uh, the real data set for the dueling equipment. So 
we just use the um, motor drive example. So what you're seeing over here has um, Let's do the real state of this plot. So you see over here, you have the uh, controlled voltage source and then H bridge and then the DC motor. And the DC motor, when you try to, um, you make this uh, physics based model, you don't know exact parameters for, um, like, for example, amateur um, um, resistance or inductance or the uh, back EMF constant or a mechanical component like the inertia or damping. So um, what we can do is you can use the uh, parameter estimation tool to make it estimate the, the real value. So if I just run one time with the default uh, values, as you can see, this is input signal. This is the, the uh, motor output shaft velocity. You can see the yellow line is what um, the simulated data, <clears throat> and then what is the uh, collected from the field. So there is a lot of uh, discrepancy between those two, and this parameter estimation tool can help to optimize the values of the parameters. I can hit the run button that takes a little bit of time, so I just built, uh, made this um, video. So let's go through this one. So basically, uh, the same um, uh, example and the uh, same primary estimation uh, program. Um, and it's actually doing the iteration for the optimization problem to solve this um, the error, try to minimize the error between simulation and the field data. So as you can see, it's already uh, converged over here, going smaller error. And <clears throat> give a couple more seconds. And then eventually when the, uh, the error goes under the threshold, we set it up, that will stop the optimization and then can find out all those parameters, the value will normally um, stored in the um, workspace. Right now, I didn't run the uh, primary estimation tool, so it's default values, but it will change once you're doing the primary primary estimation. Okay. So. Uh, we went through uh, multiple examples today. Um, it was very quick. There are lots of uh, more talk we can do for each individual uh, uh, demo, but uh, because of time limit, we can, we need to stop over here. But um, Simscape is not only limited to some um, electrical, mechanical, or uh, multibody. There are other uh, domains like thermal, liquid, or two-phase fluid, or hydraulics, or even electromagnetics. Uh, um, we have many shipping examples you can find out in the MATLAB documentations. If you want, really want to learn about how to uh, use the Simulink and Simscape to build some physics-based model for a bigger project, we offer training courses and then even if you have a very short time to finish up your project, we have consulting service 